Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper, along with Tony Haggard. This is Global Wrestling News. Wayne Eric Boyd will be joining us a little later on in the program. We go to one of the biggest topics, and that, of course, the mega important Olympic year event, the first one in the U.S., the U.S. Open. It's now being called the U.S. Senior Nationals and Trials Qualifier. It'll take place Friday and Saturday at the Las Vegas Convention Center. The top seven finishers in each weight in men's and women's freestyle and Greco will all earn trips to April's U.S. Olympic team trials in Iowa City. Greco Roman hits the mats first, and Spencer Mango has had a stranglehold on 59. Who can upset him? Uh, Jesse Thilke, he's had a, he had a strong showing at the Golden Grand Prix earlier this year. I think he has probably one of the best shots to knock him off. Uh, you also got to think about the you know the baddest man on the planet. He, he makes his return at the Open. Well, if he was back at an old competition weight, he was the guy, and I'd be shocked to see him out of the top five. Moving on to 66 kilograms, Scott, I think Dylan Ness is the big story here. Huge college star. He's dangerous and folk style, that's for sure. I think uh, people and fans definitely need to uh, be in, in tune to this weight class. Have we seen Dylan compete at all at the senior level in Greco? He was out to Bill Farrell, but he had to default out for injuries. Um, I, this will be his biggest tournament that he'll be a part of, hopefully wrestling multiple, multiple matches. All right. What other storylines should we be looking for in that discipline? Well, Ben Provisor, he's pre-registered at 75 kilograms. Dan Lobdell has him ranked third at 85 up a weight. Uh, so if he's down a weight, I think he's a little bit more dangerous, obviously. But uh, Justin uh, Justin Lester is there, and he'll definitely be uh, standing his way. 85, 98, and 130 intrigue you at all? Not so much 130 kilograms. Adam Kuhn really is the, the heavy favorite there. At 98 kilograms, uh, you got Jared Trice, Kaylor Williams, Joe Rao. You know, those would be the guys you need to watch for. Uh, 85 kilograms, it's led by uh, Patrick Martinez, John Anderson, uh, both Army guys. Uh, one of those guys will definitely be the champ. Well, moving on to women's wrestling, 48 kilos is missing some of the heavy hitters there, like Alyssa Lampy, Clarissa Chan, and Victoria Anthony. Is there a breakout star at 48? I don't think uh, there's really a breakout star, but some names you might not normally see will be on the award stand. Uh, Cody Fowle, she'll be a favorite. Uh, Marina and Regina Doy, uh, they could sneak in there. Uh, with those big names out of the, this weight class, uh, these women really have an opportunity to, to qualify for the World Team Trials. All right, I think Whitney Condor would look to be a huge favorite to win at 53, but is there no clear favorite at 58? Deshaya Allo, Kelsey Campbell, Jennifer Page, those are among the, the ones that I would see to pick there. Uh, this will be one of the, the most contested weight classes uh, at this qualifier. Aaron Conjo, Lee Jane Provisor, all registered at 63. I've got to imagine this is one of the more anticipated matchups of the weekend. I agree. You know, Provisor is coming off that bronze finish at the World Championships uh, in Vegas just a couple months ago. You know uh, that has to give her a lot of confidence going into this. But you know my pick would be to, to go with Aaron with the Sunkiss Kids at the, the title. Nice pick there. Well, you have to go with the 2008 Olympic bronze medalist Randy Miller. 69, I think. How about you? Uh, lots of highly ranked wrestlers are registered at 69. Uh, she's she's the favorite, but you can't sleep on uh, Veronica Carlson, Julia Salata, Tamara Mensa. You know, I think think this comes down to you know where they will be all placed in the bracket. Uh, Carlson is the favorite, but really second through fourth, fifth, that is going to really determine on where they get their seating. I'm going to give you a prediction. 75 kilos. Jackie Slurber from Titan Mercury, my favorite there. And speaking of Titan Mercury, that wrestling club out of San Marino, California, they're going to be seeking their third straight open team title. Will they repeat? I would say without a question, they just have the numbers to, to bring it, you know, bring that title back to San Marino. I mean, they if you look at the rankings, they've got at least two to three highly ranked wrestlers every single weight class. You know, they weren't even going to keep score and do a team title until uh, Wayne Boyd and Andy Barr suggested, hey, why not? It seems like a good idea. It does to us too. All right, we'll take a quick time out talking men's freestyle when we return. This is Global Wrestling News. Well, you've probably seen his rankings or read his articles at TakedownWrestle.com. The wrestling nomad, Dan Lobdell, joins us to break down the freestyle competition in Las Vegas. Dan, which weights will you be watching closely this weekend? 57 
Definitely looking to see, uh, starting with the lowest weight class, definitely looking to see how Andrew Hochstrasser bounces back from a tough feral. I uh, believe he went on 1-2 and two or 0-2. Oh and, uh, and then Coleman Scott, bronze medalist, coming out. I, I didn't expect to see him domestically, at least, until the uh, until the trials because he was already qualified. But he's going to throw his hat in the ring, and, and we're going to see how he does. Uh, and then, of course, I know the uh, the Iowa contingent around where you are, they're going to be following how Daniel Dennis is doing. Uh, he, I imagine he's getting you guys a uh, hearing a lot of talk up there about him. Yeah, Dan Dennis is... I think uh, at that weight class, I mean, you got Dan Dennis, Tony Ramos, uh, Matt McDonough, who's sidelined right now, all in the same room. So I think it's going to be interesting to see what uh, all of them qualify, what's going to be happening in Iowa City during the, the, those trials. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, then moving up to the to the next weight, Logan Steber, I mean, beat a, beat a uh, 2014 world champ at the Golden Grand Prix, looked, looked really, really good. Uh, but then, of course, you have Jimmy Kennedy and Kellen Russell, both out of Cliff Keen, who both have wins over Steber. So it's it's going to be pretty interesting. Uh, you have Molnaro, who split with Aaron Pico at the Feral. They're both registered. And then kind of a dark horse one who might a lot of people might not know because he was a D3 wrestler, but has been making some noise in the freestyle circuit, is Nazar Kulchitsky. Very, very dangerous wrestler. Uh, moving up to to 74, the the big news out of Farrell for 74 was uh, Dan Va- Valmont beating Nick Marable to qualify for the trials. So Valmont is not registered, and, and he doesn't need to be. So obviously we're going to see Marable. The big news, of course, Chris Perry dropping down. Looks like him and, and Tyler Caldwell, are, uh, the Oklahoma State boys, are essentially trading weights there. It's interesting to me because... You know, even with guys like Caldwell, Dake, and Taylor moving up to 86, Perry was in the third place match at 86 kilos the past few years. Um, and so he's clearly right there with the top guys at 86, but I don't know. Maybe he feels that he can overpower Jordan Burroughs and that, that he's got a better shot down there. Uh, but I, I think part of it is that, that 174 trap in college that a lot of guys are you know, for the, on the men's freestyle side, at least, are kind of getting trapped there because not only is there a huge jump between 74 kilos and 86 kilos, the uh, there's no non-Olympic weight, at least in Greco, there's not Olympic weight that those guys can go um, in off years. So that 174 trap, man, that's that's something that a kid like Mark Hall is going to need to worry about fighting as he goes forward. Good knowledge as always, Dan Lobdell. Anything else uh, fans need to look forward to this weekend? Um, yeah, let's, let's just wrap up the last two freestyle weights real quick. Uh, JT Felix looked, looked pretty good at the at the Feral, so he's one to keep an eye on at 97 qualifying. Enoch Francois has ma- made incredible jumps, or maybe not even incredible, just uh, maybe people weren't paying attention to, to how good he really was. Um, Kale Byers and Dustin Kilgore are obviously going to be in the mix at, at 97. Uh, and then finally looking up to 125, Tony Nelson, the former Minnesota champ, had some great wins over Tyrell Fortune, two wins over Tyrell Fortune at the, the Farrell. So I want to see if Tyrell can, can get back there. Uh, we're going to see Don Bradley because he did not he did not uh, get that qualifier at the Farrell. And then Connor Medbury on an Olympic shirt from Wisconsin. He's got some, some overseas experience now after going over to the over to France, and then of course, uh, in your neck of the woods, Bobby Telford. Finally, get to see him domestically compete. He competed in Russia. He competed um, in the Clubs Cup in Iran. So we're finally going to get to see him domestically at the top level of heavyweight. Great stuff, as always, Dan. Uh, thanks for joining us here on Global Wrestling News. Absolutely. Be sure to check out the the rankings and the previews on TakedownWrestle.com. Thanks, Tony. All right, thanks, Dan. Coming up, we have a very special guest with a very special hat. Stick around. It's Global Wrestling News. Well, it's time to take a trip to the West Coast and see what's up with Wayne Boyd. Here's the man himself with a brand new episode of As I See It. 
Hey, Scott Casper, I'm so glad you called. You know, when Scott Casper calls, we have to answer no matter what we're doing. I was out in the field dragging the gum acres and making nice for the horses. But folks, I got something I want to share with you. World Cup 10,000. Now, June seems a long way away. But if we don't start on this right now, this one opportunity to put on an international event here in America, Los Angeles, at the forum, the famous forum, if we don't fill that stadium, we're letting our sport down. The fan base in America has got to come out. We know Southern California is going to support it, but it's not enough. I want buses and planes coming from Oklahoma, from Iowa, from Ohio. We have to make this a great event. All our celebrities will be there. We're going to do special greet and meets. There's going to be clinics. This is going to be an activity. It's going to be a celebration of wrestling. And we need to show the 2024 people of Los Angeles that we've got a voice in this Olympic game. So this is more important than just the World Cup 10,000, which means 10,000 people in the stands on Saturday and 10,000 people in the stands on Sunday screaming. I want to out yell the Iranians. I am tired of them making more noise than we do. So this is a great opportunity. We're going to put some packages together, some opportunity for people to come. We're going to have the tailgate celebration out in the parking lot. I might even put a daggum Ferris wheel in there. Let's have some fun and let's show people that wrestling in Los Angeles is important. World Cup June 2016. That's two months before Rio. Let's get this thing done for World Cup and USA Wrestling and Titan Mercury and Sunkissed New York AC. Let's all come together one time and show the world we have the strength of all sports. We are the sport. Let's do this, fans. We need you. We really need you. Call me direct. Call Scott, 760-218-4028. Let me know how you want to do what you want to do, and so help me, goodness, we'll help you get it done. I don't know, man. Cool hat? Hey, that's cool. I want one. Where, where the heck do you get it? I, I mean, can you picture Wayne Boyd out scooping manure and no. with that in that hat? I mean, it's, it's California. Is it really cold out He's there? He's a hard worker dude, but I think he hires people to do that kind of work. <laughs> All right. Uh, before we go to break, what do you say? Let's take a look at our UWW Wrestling Move of the Week. College front, big news out there. Number eight, Missouri upset the number three ranked team at home last weekend. You predicted a big win out of Ohio State. As a matter of fact, you put push-ups on the line. How do you feel about your prediction now? Well, I'll, I'll gladly take the push-ups. This was a, a definitely a, a great duel to watch. I, I saw this on, if I saw this on paper again, I think I would stand by my prediction. You know, Simmons fall, that's really what got this started for Missouri. And, and, you know, it went down. They, I mean, they were down 10-0 to 0 at that time. That spark, they needed that to, to get that next match over Micah Jordan. He's a, he's a big favorite there and, you know, somebody that's up and coming. So, you know, one thing that I just didn't expect, Scott, was those bonus points from Missouri. All right, so no apologies. No, no apologies. Wow. I, I would have predicted them to win again if I, got, I was given the, you know, put a gun to my head. I'll, I'll pick Ohio State. <laughs> so no Negative email from Blaze Butler, Willie Miklas, Jaden Cox. I've gotten a whole bunch of plaudits. You get the negative emails. Jaden Cox ended the duel with bonus point victories. You're telling me you didn't see any of them putting up those kind of points? Those guys are the, the strength of the lineup. I had bonus points for Miklas and Cox, but not Butler. I mean, Miklas is by far the most underrated wrestlers. I've said that multiple times. You know, he, he is. He's the most uh, underrated wrestler at that weight class in the country. But uh, Butler, this uh, transfer in, this is the, a huge addition to their lineup and is a game changer for them, obviously. All right, jump ahead. What about Cox? What about that takedown he had against Ohio? Was it worthy of a DQ or just an accident? I don't think so. His motion started at the center of the mat. This is what you teach kids to do is just try to take that shot in the middle of the mat and then just take him as far as you can. He might have taken it a little bit too far, but 
I want to blame that score table for being too close. There's got to be five feet from the out of bounds line to to where the next you know object is. And so I mean, it, it was probably going to happen if it was a foot back, two feet back. But I think at the end of the day, it was just an accident. All right, let's head down to Norman, Oklahoma. Cade Brock stole the Bedlam spotlight there, pinning returning national champ Cody Brewer in his varsity debut. Is Brock a title contender, or is Brewer just not what he was a year ago? It only took him 42 seconds, but it, you know, it, it wasn't like he ran a half, he locked up a cradle. This was from a scramble position. At one point, it looked like Brewer is actually going to come out on top of, of Brock. You know, I think at this level, if if you get put on your back, 95% of the time, that guy is going to get the fall. So. All right, so you weren't impressed by the pin? Not necessarily. I'm just not going to just build up on this huge hype around him because of it was a scramble position. You know, Oklahoma won't be in the title hunt. You know, I think uh, with with Brewer here, we got he's got to figure out 133, 141 where he's going to go. So I think coaches need to sit down and, and since they're out of that title hunt, find a way that Cody Brewer can win another title. I'm putting you on a diet through the Christmas break and try to get your attitude changed, son. I got to tell you, on the team side, Oklahoma State held the number one ranking in a lot of the preseason polls, but this was really the only great performance they've had all year. Will it carry over into the second half, and are the Cowboys still considered one of the favorites heading into March? We'll go to Hager with his biased opinion. <laughs> If they if they continue to pull some of these red shirts off, I think they will be the favorite, clear a, a clear favorite if they do that. But I think it's still pretty early to tell. You know, I uh, talked to coach. We've said this multiple times that they they have to be consistent, and it's showing. I mean, Marsden, Clamara, they're not cons consistent. They you know they were at this duel, so they have to put it together every single duel. I see exactly what you're saying. All right, international action. We go to India. Alyssa Lampy and Adeline Gray wrestled there in India's new pro league on opposing teams. Gray scored a first period 10-0 tech fall while Lampy went up 6-3 early before dropping a 9-6 decision. What can we take away from the PWL so far? From what I can tell, this is just a, a real thought out league. Uh, production's top notch, uh, the locations are thought out, you know, just everything tells me this has been in the works for a real long time. You know, the, the leagues that we've had in the past have failed, I think because of planning, production, promotion, you know, the media outlets in, in the country here, it seems like they only want to promote it if they're having their hand out and getting money from it. So the ones over there in India, everybody came around and promoted this sucker. All right, we only had two athletes in the league, both women, no men. Why? I don't have the answer for that. Uh, from what I have heard from other, you know, leagues, men or the American men are asking for just a lot of money to wrestle one match. You know, we're, we're asking for thirty to forty thousand dollars. I mean, these guys uh, and gals are, are being asked to wrestle over ten matches over there. So there's no way that they can you know, be paid thirty thousand dollars. Well, that real pro wrestling league. Remember that? Well, that was the closest we've come to a league similar to this. I think it was perhaps a little bit before its time. We have bigger names, bigger stars are going to help build a fan base, and that's what it's going to take. The wrestlers and coaches will have to give a little to get a lot at the beginning for it to succeed. This won't be the MLB or NBA or NFL right away, but it has potential if everybody gets on board. All right, Tony, we'll talk more on the next episode for sure, but that's next week. For now, we're out of time, so we'd like to thank our executive producer, Andrew F. Barth, our producer, Wayne Eric Boyd, and my partner in crime, Tony Hager, our producer of today's program, of course, Brad Johnson. I'm Scott Casper. We'll see you next week on Global Wrestling News.